Hello, everyone. We're back on the ATPA Days London on in the afternoon, and we will start uh, with a great uh, uh, with a great topic, uh, especially on let's say how we move from open banking to embedded finance. But we will talk also about uh, specific API business models or new products that are enabled by this new uh, set of technology APIs are offering to us. And for that, we will start with Roland Selmer, the Chief Product Officer of uh, Yapili, uh, who will join us on stage. Hello, Roland. Can you? Yes, we can hear you. We can see you. Very How good, are you good. today? Uh, very good, Betty. Thanks for that intro. Yeah, thank you very much. Are you able to share your slide with us? Yes, Yapili is one of the successful company of the open banking infrastructure era, and we'll be glad to listen uh, to your talk about hotbed for payment innovation. The stage is yours for 20 minutes, Roland, and we will take questions from the audience at the end. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mehdi. Um, as Mehdi said, uh, my name is Roland. Uh, I'm the Chief Product Officer of Yepli. Quick shameless Yepli plug. We're an open banking technical service provider, uh, focusing mainly, obviously, on uh, infrastructure and developer experience and, and not uh, operating in the, the application space. Um, so the, the, the topic of my talk today that, that I kind of inherited was open banking APIs, the hotbed for payments innovation. And that's quite a, quite a large segment to, to cover in, I guess, 20 minutes. Um, so specifically focusing on payments and, and how payments are kind of serviced um, in a, let's say, e-commerce environment um, and specifically uh, in mobile. So um, I, thought, I thought it would be good to... Uh, quick tongue in cheek, some, uh, uh, start with some definitions. So when we talk about a hotbed of, of payments innovation, um, we're really talking about this, this, this environment of promoting the growth of something. And that's kind of the growth of payments um, as a discipline um, and as a product. Um, we won't be talking about the, the, the second definition, uh, but certainly about, you know, how does open banking um, uh, provide, let's say the enabler, the infrastructure, the scaffolding, um, for innovation uh, in, in payments. And I thought it would be quite good actually to start, let's say, from, uh, let's say, a trip down memory lane and looking at customer innovation in payments. Um, and those for a, of a certain, uh, um, let's say, time frame, and I include myself in this, starting off back in the 1950s, uh, actually using carbon paper. And for some people, I guess that might be almost like a ludicrous concept. Um, where you had to put actually cars in, in this mechanical device and, and swipe over with the roller to, to force an imprint um, into, you know, three, uh, three copies of carbon paper. But, you know, at the time um, when cars were just kind of uh, released, I think back then, well, Diners Club, I think possibly were, were one of the first ones, you know, this was, <laughs> this was innovation. This is the way that the payments were taken um, using a mechanical device and, actual, you know, an actual paper. Um, and that's, you know, it's hard to think that it um, took until 1995 and there were various innovations, obviously, through different payment structures, different loyalty cards uh, along the way. But the real technical uh, uh, technology innovation really happened back in 1995. Um, and it's, it's quite interesting to think that, you know, that's almost a quarter of a century ago uh, when, when, in fact, you know, contactless payments started uh, started. Um, you know, coming to the fore. Um, and, you know, it's a historical, interesting historical fact that it was the sole bus transport association. So the real driver around this um, reduction in friction physically as well um, was actually in, you know, in, in, in the transport vertical and, and, you know, contactless payments were born. Um, and obviously those have gone from strength to strength. And, you know, we kind of take it for granted now that every card that we use uh, to make payments um, is indeed a you know a contact a device, but you know as I said, quarter of a century ago, that's hard to believe. You know, time flies. And then something interesting happened in 2009, where this you know a, a uh, just let's say disgruntled uh, Twitter CEO started a, a a very important company, as as we all um, as we all have seen uh, since 2009. Square launched this card reader, uh, and then kind of very fast later, merchant services. And I think this was. Uh, it's an important distinction because it really, let's say, democratized on the merchant side of things, the ability uh, to take payments via cards, um, which is um, historically, I guess, the purview of much larger companies. Um, 
and really allowing you know a, a, a whole ecosystem of much smaller companies, mom and pop shops, um, market traders, opening up this wide, um, let's say this wide ecosystem of uh, merchants and, and smaller small operators to really start taking payments. And uh, that was probably quite an, quite an epoch moment in uh, the whole, let's say, payments um, uh, innovation timeframe. And then we obviously get to 2011 and then later 2014, where, you know, um, Alphabet and um, obviously Apple launched their, their, um, their payment products um, on Apple Pay and, and, and respectively Android Pay. And again, another defining moment in, the, let's say, the convenience back onto the consumer side, the convenience of, of just pulling out your phone and, and, and tapping something. Um, so I really, you know, from the 1950s to, to 1995 and then onwards, um, definitely, let's say, uh, a slow start in innovation, but we're really seeing small and smaller gaps. Um, and then open banking, you know, what can we expect? What can we expect um, open banking to, to kind of bring to bring to the payments uh, innovation party, so to speak. I think it's also useful also to look on, on let's say, the schemes um, side of things. Um, and uh, you know, apologies, it's a very UK-centric uh, view of the world. Uh, we're based, based in the UK. Uh, but obviously, the, uh, the analogy is similar, um, and, the, and these kind of schemes exist globally. But, you know, different schemes for different purposes, again, like innovating, um, some overlapping. But... Um, you know, backs, uh, sl you know, slower settlement time, one or two days for for, for settlement and, and lower values. And and then, you know, chap settlement, uh, sorry, uh, um, faster settlements, but for higher values. So, for instance, um, uh, payments for high values like uh, deposits for cars or deposits for a house. And then, you know, innovating, again, in the scheme side of things, faster payments for very fast uh, settlements and, and being very inexpensive and then and obviously uh, swift for for international payments so just like we had those innovations from our consumer and merchant side of things we also have this wide gamut of of innovation as kind of time progressed on on different payment schemes so let's say that's kind of the, the counterpoint so when we talk about innovation um in payment, I think it's also good to look at um, what are the what are the what are the vectors of innovation. Like, what are the what are the problems we're trying to solve um, from, let's say, consumers' uh, point of view and, and also the merchants' point of view. And you know, sometimes these are orthogonal. Um, so, on the consumer side of things, we definitely want to see payments that have uh, very low friction. You know, we, we want it to be speedy. We don't have to, for instance, pull out a card and enter information and you know, we've forgotten, you know, a number or an expiry date and that, that kind of adds, adds friction to the, um, uh, to the transaction. Um, we want them to be simple. Um, we don't want, you know, very complicated authentication schemes or, or multiple 2FA steps. Um, but then at the same time, we want them to be secure. You know, we do, we do not want to be subject to, um, as we, you know, we're all used to now, kind of phishing and smishing at, at attacks. Um, so sometimes from a consumer perspective, we want things to be fast and simple, but at the same time, we also want them to be secure. And on the merchant side of things, you know, we, want, we, we didn't want the um, whatever um, uh, payment services we're using, we don't want them to, you know, take a large percentage of our, of our revenues. Um, we also want to reduce the risk of, uh, of those payments um, and, uh, and uh, reduce the risk of fraud. And at, and we also want to have, you know, high quality, high quality uh, payments. So, on the consumers and merchants within each of those, um, let's say, um, problem-solving uh, vectors, some of those are orthogonal. And then sometimes we also have um, tension between what consumers want and what, what what merchants want. So it is a very difficult problem space. And and as we'll see, kind of through this through this talk, uh, open banking can definitely play. Play a part to, you know, let's say, mutually solving some of those some of those problems. So, <laughs> I'm assuming most people on this talk already know about banking, uh, open banking. Um, it could be a whole talk in itself, and I'm sure uh, that exists um, in itself. Uh, but from an open banking 101 perspective, we have uh, third-party providers providing um, uh, commonly what's known as AIS and PIS um, 
services, uh, account information and, 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 and payment initiation services. We kind of talking about the latter here and companies such as Yapli, um, kind of technical service provider, infrastructure companies provide a single integration to lots of banks. That's kind of open banking 101. So how does that bring uh, and, and how does that um, enable, let's say, innovations um, in the, um, let's say, in the payment space? So, just to quickly look at the basic PIS uh, payment initiation user journey, it helps understand how this, um, how paying by bank, uh, let's say, can solve some of these problems. So, traditionally, we have a, a, PI, a PISP, a payment initiation service provider. Uh, um, the user consumer enters some account details, confirms payment. Uh, there's a redirection screen to uh, to the ASPSP and open banking. Unfortunately, we do like our our acronyms. So ASPSP, just think of the um, account serving um, uh, payment service provider, typically a bank. There's some authentication, strong authentication uh, uh, um, flow. And then the ASPSP uh, redirects back to the PSP and you have a successful payment initiation, um, uh, initiation confirmation. That's generally the, the basic PIS uh, user journey. So, so what kind of innovations um, does that bring to, um, to payments? So definitely on speed, so faster settlement. Um, from a merchant's perspective, they, uh, um, they see the, uh, uh, the, the funds transferred uh, pretty much instantly. The lower risk um, in terms of the, the, the fraud vectors, um, lower risk of, let's say, card, uh, card theft, um, um, uh, uh, fraud um, from, from, from that perspective, um, quality, a reduction in chargeback risks, um, again, related to, let's say, uh, stolen cards or other fraud vectors. Um, the value, it's lower cost uh, from the merchant perspective, but then that then can be passed on uh, from a consumer perspective. Uh, from a customer experience perspective, definitely um, better refunds uh, and processing, and then kind of reliability of the whole infrastructure. So things like cooker funds confirmations and the APIs um, and, and those kind of things. So we've definitely seen um, innovation from a payments perspective enabled um, uh, from an open banking perspective. But um, I think it's good to just go back to that PIS uh, user journey and, and, you know, what are the areas that we can improve like from an open banking perspective? So looking at the wireframes, looking at that user journey again, you know, a, a user is presented with a, um, with a confirmation and a confirmation of the payment details, then the user has to authenticate uh, via some kind of password or, or a biometric, it could be face ID or, or fingerprint ID in this case, and then the pay payment confirmation and then kind of the redirect screen. So what did he use this as, as maybe like the starting point to talk about, you know, where, where are we going as an industry and um, what are the things that we can improve from a, from a payment and innovation perspective? So future innovation and, and, and maybe some of the gaps um, as maybe uh, um, a way forward and, and, and conclusion. Um, starting with the payment UX, so from the previous screen, uh, um, we definitely have to be focusing on mobile first payment experiences. Um, I think we're all very much uh, used to um, very much used to um, you know making payments uh, via mobile now, and we we're seeing you know the evidence that you know ever larger um, payment size and, and volumes are, are are being made from a mobile first um, from mobiles. Um, you know even you know uh, buying you know electric vehicles these days um, it's quite common just to do it from your mobile. Um, everything has been enabled from that perspective. We're also seeing um, the emergence of uh, very large social networks uh, moving towards, you know, uh, super apps. Um, the, you know, the stores within the uh, with, within the social networks and the stores and and kind of the checkout experience within the apps themselves. So all evidence is pointing to a very mobile first payment experience. So it's incumbent on us, um, both as an industry, as third party providers, and um, as a ASPSPs, to reduce the friction in that kind of checkout experience um, using open banking API. So I don't think it's just the, let's say the purview of, of, of a single part of the industry, but it's up to us to, to create, um, to create that end to end uh, low friction journey. 
part of that, um, certainly within our company, within our industry, is, is about making the APIs more asynchronous um, and deterministic. Um, this leads to uh, far better um, a, a far better user experience. And again, I don't think it's just you know the the technical service providers like Yapli. I think there's a kind of a shared responsibility between us and the ASPSPs and others in, in the greater ecosystem to provide you know more reliable, more robust, and you know higher quality APIs. From our perspective, that's definitely better developer tooling, um, better de developer experience, um, definitely making you know the APIs uh, that that um, that we expose to our customers, and again the rest of the TSPs in the, in, in the industry. We need to be first class API companies. Um, we need to be first class uh, developer led first class API companies. So that's kind of on the whole user experience developer um, um, developer centric um, view. On open banking as a discipline and, 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 and an industry, I think there's, it's fair to say that there's a fair amount of work to be done in terms of custom education and mass adoption. We're seeing uh, great strides and, and, and great adoption. And I think that you know, uh, custom education on pay by bank, for instance, uh, user journeys, um, and uh, going back to the original payment UX perspective, um, I think we sh there's still some way to go. And I still think there's a, a fair amount of custom education to to really get to that mass adoption, uh, mass inflection point. We'll see a lot of that with the new bank APIs and the new use cases that are starting to come on board, premium APIs, whatever they may be whatever we want to call them. Um, we, we, you know, we only see an increase um, in the adoption rate um, uh, from a famous perspective. And again, finally, from an open banking perspective, you know, open banking is definitely core to the ASPSP's digitalization strategy. I don't think it's a one size fits all uh, perspective. I think, um, again, these are not mutually exclusive um, uh, goals. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, open banking, Definitely from a digitization um, strategy perspective for ASPSPs, I think open banking definitely plays a central role to that. And kind of finally to wrap up, um, open finance, you know, open finance is truly, let's say the, uh, the goal of, of, of the whole exercise as well. So, you know, um, the true democratization of, of financial control and, and data ownership as we move um, to a world of Privacy first, um, and data ownership, data sovereignty, data sovereignty. Um, certainly, open banking plays plays a central role to that. Um, we can only see that being, you know, a more central theme from our perspective, at least. Um, so I think that uh, that definitely leads to um, kind of reaching that, let's say, holy grail of of, of what we want to achieve. Um, and then we get to, let's say, more esoteric use cases and and what can be achieved. Um, bank unbundling, most of us already have multiple banks on our phones. So this is not a unique, um, not a unique and uh, unique event. And we could, in the future, we could probably start seeing um, a future where, you know, the, again, the, the holy grail of how do we, what is the bridge between, let's say, mixing fiat and, and crypto, um, certainly use cases in there and open banking playing a central, let's say, a, a central enabling theme. Um, uh, to enabling those kind of use cases, and the same goes for you know managing, uh, buying, selling um, alternative assets uh, in primary and, and secondary markets. So I know that was a super quick, uh, super quick overview of kind of open banking and kind of innovation and, and where we see things going. So um, I think I'm one or two minutes early, um, and yeah, thanks very much for for listening. Um, uh, and again, hopefully, hopefully next year we'll. We'll see everybody uh, in person. And um, if we've got any time for, for any uh, questions, that would be great. Yeah, thank you, Roland. Uh, actually, we have someone in the audience that say, who says that uh, he had a customer. Uh, no, he had someone use of those paper machines on his credit card a few years ago. That was uh, insane. And I remember <laughs> in 2012, uh, yeah, people taking the footprint of my credit card in San Francisco. Even in 2012, uh, like in some uh, computer history museum, actually, that was. So funny enough, uh, yeah, payment is, is evolving a lot. So we have, we have a question about the, the future of payments. Like what will be to your mind the user, the future user experience or customer experience about payments? 
that you explored a little bit into your talk, but what what's the one that's the more with the highest likelihood to happen? That's a great question. Um, I don't think I have a, a perfect answer for that. And maybe I started alluding to, um, to that in, the, in one of the very last points. Um, you know, open banking is certainly from a democratization and uh, perspective is, let's say, the, the tip of the iceberg for, for what's happening in the future. Um, and, you know, what I was trying to say is that open banking and open finance will will perhaps be the necessary bridge between, let's say, uh, current centralized you know, payments infrastructure and maybe a more decentralized, you know. I don't wanna I don't wanna say that definitely will be something like crypto, but uh, certainly some kind of distributed ledger model, perhaps. Um, but you know, as we've seen, the world's not just gonna jump directly to that. There has to be this, let's say, this 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 bridge between the two. So um, yeah. I'm I'm fairly I'm cautiously optimistic that uh, you know, as uh, as that becomes a more let's say recognized legitimate use case and having some kind of bridge, um, yeah, I think we'll probably see a lot of innovation there. We have a question about the uh, Yapily uh, in a sense that <clears throat> the, the layer you provide enables you to be a system of intelligence of payment, right? You are able to see the demand and also the provider. Uh, what customer experience you will be able to enable based on this unique position as uh, the system of, intelli of intelligence of the payment industry? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. And, and it goes down, it goes back to who we are as a company, like our DNA, focusing very much on, um, let's say, the quality of the API and, you know, not to get uh, super, super technical uh, for each event. Each event, certainly in a payments perspective, each event, uh, when those events occur, and um, the let's say the accuracy of those of those events in in a let's say a very asynchronous mode, that allows us to provide the intelligence, as you say, um, the drivers of the UI and the UX for our um, third-party providers um, to provide a better user experience. Ultimately, it comes down to, for from a consumer perspective. Like what is the best user journey? What is the best user experience? And coming back to that, uh, that one slide I have with the with the almost like you know cost, quality, um, uh, kind of time or or, or expense um, uh, vectors. You know, consumers want something that's uh, super frictionless but safe at the same time. So I think you know from our perspective, the uh, the intelligence that we see the the um, 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 the interactions uh, with the banks that 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 needs to be provided at the let's say highest quality possible, which will which will in turn enable our customers to serve uh, their consumers um, in that super frictionless uh, and super secure model. Yes, some people are asking if do you think at one point uh, platforms like Yapily will enable to have these uh, you know contactless and seamless payments. Uh, that we can see, you know, at the uh, uh, Amazon shops or whatever, that you 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 don't feel to you you're paying, but you don't have the experience of paying, right? Will you enable at some point banks to have to innovate faster in terms of payment? So your the last you know the last sentence was very accurate. You know, we definitely um, look at working with banks and other ASPSBs um, from a partner, partnership perspective. Definitely enabling kind of them to. To innovate on their, let's say, um, digitalization strategy. Um, with regards to like specific applications, no, I don't think we'll ever operate in the application space. We, you know, very firmly in the infrastructure um, and, and tooling business. Um, you know, solving that is 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 a extremely challenging <laughs> job in itself. Um, you know, we had, we had an API. We had an API conference. Uh, I think there's definitely um, appreciation of uh, how hard getting a really good DevX is, uh, certainly on, in, in API. So, you know, that's that's our focus. Yeah, there is enough uh, <laughs> uh, work to do on just on being an API and be already a huge, a huge company. This is all what we uh, what we that we're hoping for you and Yapily. Thank you very much, uh, Roland. Uh, thank you uh, for being there with us and glad to have Yapli speak at the other open banking events we organize. And, uh